Welcome back everyone, today we will be discussing the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0. Specifically, we will be discussing some release info, how to cop, and of course, some resale predictions at the end of the video. The Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0 releases on May 15th, not too far away. Retail is at $170 for men, $130 for grade school sizes. Stock between all sizes combined worldwide is under 130,000 pairs. This is just slightly above the average stock that we normally see for Jordan 1 highs. However, 25,000 pairs have actually already released through Sneakers US on the exclusive access drop that we just saw a few days ago. Regarding resale, we will cover that towards the end of the video as always, but with the release info out of the way, let's jump into how to cop the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0s. Specifically for this how to cop, we'll be going in chronological order along with exactly how to efficiently manage your time and set up for this drop, since a lot will be going on at once. Prior to discussing the first come first serve online drops though, make sure you follow my Twitter KeithAdam10 and personals for you for any urgent updates on these, such as the exclusive access that we already saw. Also for those of you who asked me, my Instagram is Keith underscore Adam underscore. Feel free to follow me if you want to get to know me outside of reselling, outside of business and programming. This is essentially just my personal page. Also, please make sure that you don't forget to sign up for the Flex app reservation. This is definitely one of your best ways to get pairs, as well as asking your local foot stores about their procedure for leftover pairs if they don't already load the leftovers on the app. But now, moving on to the actual first come first serve online sites, we'll be starting with the US sites in chronological order, then we'll jump into the Europe sites afterwards. This site list is very similar to the last one we did, since it doesn't really change too much when it comes to Jordan 1 highs. At 8am Eastern Time, we should be seeing undefeated drop as usual, unless they do specifically post about a 10am Eastern Time drop like they did on the Raging Bull Jordan 5s. So before this time, make sure you are signed into your undefeated account, as it is required for the site to check out. Be ready to solve a checkpoint capture as well. If you don't have access to a Shopify monitor, you can try refreshing the search page for AJ1 High, but your chances of copying will be slim since it is Shopify at the end of the day. If hypothetically they do drop at 10 a.m. Eastern Time rather than the normal 8 a.m. Eastern Time like the Raging Bulls were, I would not suggest focusing your attention on here as there will be better opportunities, those of which we're about to discuss. So now moving on to the confirmed 10 a.m. Eastern Time drops, this is where the actual fun begins. As I like to say. Since there's a lot to focus on, I'm going to be guiding you and suggesting to you guys how to efficiently manage your time as per usual. First, I would suggest going for Hibbit at exactly 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You guys know what's up with this, what I've been suggesting recently, and it's been going very, very well for you guys manually. For everyone who was asking about the press and hold loop though, this is unfortunately the result of the Perimeter X bot protection. In order to avoid the loop, rather than just refreshing the product page, visit the coming soon page under launches and click the product just several seconds before 10 a.m. Eastern Time. By the time it loads the page and you solve the press and hold, sizes should show for you as it should be live. Try to time it to the best of your abilities. You should also try to generate some activity on the website at least 20 minutes before the drop or so. Your goal is essentially just to emulate normal customer human behavior. My biggest advice when going for Hibbit by far is definitely to use Apple Pay on your mobile device for the most efficient checkout. Now as an alternative to Hibbit, if you prefer not to go for Hibbit for whatever reason, you can choose one or two Shopify sites to focus on at exactly 10 a.m. Eastern Time since those will also be selling out the quickest. If I had to choose two for you guys, I normally tend to suggest Jimmy Jazz and DTLR since they do get pretty high stock, they do have a checkpoint as well. Normally I would stay away from suggesting Shop Nice Kicks or Shoe Palace because they do charge a whopping $27 shipping. Nobody likes that, but in this specific case, you should still be able to make a little profit regardless of that $27 shipping but it's definitely still gonna hurt your margin. If you have tax in your state, you might wanna focus on DTLR and Jimmy Jazz, and that's of course if you do choose a Shopify site over Hibbit. Again, I still personally suggest Hibbit over a Shopify site, but it's up to you guys. Also, remember the tip that I did suggest for Shop Nice Kicks and Shoe Palace, if you did plan to go for those when making the add to cart links, if you do hypothetically want to, these sites do load the variants beforehand. Just view page source by right clicking and clicking view page source, control F to find your desired size by typing in variants, searching for that keyword, picking your desired size, copying that variant, and adding it into this format, domain slash cart slash variant colon one. 
feel free to watch my Bad Bunny Adidas video for a more in-depth review of this if you do need some help. If you're in a group that does send Kith early links, you could also choose to go for Kith since that will give you an edge as well. Be prepared for a potential HCAPTCHA question pop-up as well if you do choose to go for Kith as your 10 a.m. Eastern time site, they usually tend to have it. But now right after those first come first serve drops are over, depending on which one you decided to use, whether it's Hibbit or even while you're still waiting in the Shopify queue, I want you guys to enter in as many sneakers accounts into the drop as possible until 10 10 a.m. Eastern time. This is going to be your number one chance by far for copying these, but now what is the most efficient way to cop off of Nike sneakers manually? So these are currently loaded as a Dan drop, unlike what we normally have been seeing, which is a Leo drop. Dan drops are also known as draws. You you essentially have 10 minutes to enter in as many of your accounts into the raffle as possible. Evidently, the more you can enter within that period, the better the probability of winning will actually be. I actually made a full in-depth video regarding this, which I'd highly suggest watching because there is much more to it. If you guys do need to make more accounts, remember that Nike requires SMS verification. You can't use the same phone number twice, so you will have to ask a friend of yours to use their phone number and ask them for the verification code. However, if you'd rather not bother your friends or you just want a significant amount of pre-verified Nike sneakers accounts in general, feel free to check out my site TARS. The link is in the description below for pre-verified Nike sneakers or Adidas accounts. After Nike sneakers, it will be 10, 10 a.m. Eastern time. At this point, you'll want to shift your focus onto foot sites and periodic checking finish line, JD Sports, and Snipes to see if you have past Q. Make sure to set up these tabs for these sites beforehand. You should not try to set these up last minute. I will tweet out the full site list on my account, KeithAdam10, as well as personals for you, so definitely take some time the night before, or even when you wake up before the drops occur, try to set up these links. This way, when you're focusing on those first come first serve drops, you can just already have those tabs set up and wait in queue. As soon as 10-10 is over, then you can head over to focusing on those. The key to copying on foot sites, which is Foot Locker, Kids Foot Locker, Foot Action, East Bay and Champs, is persistency, not exactly speed. However, as of the last half a year or so, like I've been saying, manual has unfortunately changed from very difficult to now nearly impossible since the Data Dome was introduced to foot sites. Regardless, it's still worth trying at this time anyway since there isn't much going on anyway, so might as well give it a shot. As for finish line, JD Sports and Snipes, as you're trying to cart on foot sites, just periodically keep checking your tabs on these sites to see if you have pass Q. When you do pass Q, pretty self-explanatory from there, just add to cart and check out. Snipes did not load these yet, so they might not actually drop, but I will keep you guys updated, and if they are dropping, of course, it's gonna be on my site list that I do tweet out. Anyway, that will conclude it for the US sites. Now moving on to the Europe sites. Although many Europe retailers are unfortunately doing raffles, regardless, there still are going to to be a few opportunities for you guys. The best drop, of course, for Europe would definitely be Nike sneakers at 9 a.m. CEST. They are currently loaded as a Dan drop, also known as a draw, which we discussed earlier. Since this is a draw, you won't need to prioritize this site at exactly 9 a.m. CEST. I'd suggest focusing on a first come first serve site of your choice, those of which we'll be discussing, then coming back to sneakers right after that drop ends, so you still have at least nine to eight minutes to enter in all your accounts. It is extremely likely that Soulbox will be dropping at 9 a.m. CEST as usual. If you have access to a Soulbox monitor, you will definitely have a decent chance to copy manually here. And very similar to Hibbit, Soulbox also does use Perimeter X protection, so you will tend to get that press and hold loop. I do understand, guys, it's very frustrating to have to deal with that. The best thing I could suggest to you guys to at least partially avoid this or at least reduce it is to generate some activity on the site beforehand, peruse some products, search for some products, just essentially emulate normal human customer behavior. That's all it really takes. I would also suggest making an account beforehand and being signed into that account, of course. Zalando, Courier, and Snipe should also be dropping these, but they have not loaded the products just yet, but they should be loading them before the drop, of course. Then Offspring may also potentially drop too. For Offspring, I would suggest enabling post notifications on their Instagram if you don't have access to a monitor. They're relatively fast at sending it out when it does go live. They normally do not drop at 9 a.m. CEST whenever they do, so do not focus on there at 9 either, as there are other opportunities. Foot Locker will also be dropping. Try to use multiple Chrome users to pass Q on here. And then, very similar to the US foot sites like we were discussing earlier, it's going to be very, very difficult to actually cart on here. Foot Locker will probably be the worst drop as usual. Just leave the tabs on it, and if you get through, you get through. And again, Foot Locker is a Q release, so no need to focus here at exactly 9 a.m. CEST. You can kind of focus on this afterwards, even after sneakers is over. 
that will be it for the how to cop portion of the video though now with the how to cop out of the way let's move on to some resale predictions as mentioned earlier the current stock on the between men and grade school size is actually just slightly higher than what we normally see for Jordan 1 highs. It's not a drastic amount, so that does not concern me too much. However, in addition to the slightly higher stock, this colorway does have slightly less demand than a lot of the prior Jordan 1s that we have discussed on this channel before. Although exclusive access already did go out, and a good amount of pairs are in circulation right now from that and early pairs, the sale volume per day is still subpar compared to some other more hype Jordan 1s that we have discussed before. Nonetheless, we are still five days out from the drop, so it's nothing too concerning at all. However, you will see that the bids illustrate marginally less demand than some such as the Hyper Royal ones or the University Blue ones, and this should really come as no surprise to you guys. Regardless, there is still evidently really solid demand for these, just not the best. The Shadow colorway is a classic one, and this is a pretty interesting spin-off of it. Without a doubt, although the demand is not the best for a Jordan 1, it's still pretty solid and the stock is not too concerning either. Therefore, I expect these to hold up after the drop. They should still be profitable with a good margin in any size without tax, and at least a decent margin if you do have tax. The grade school pairs are no exception. They should also perform well. Although this is not the best Jordan one in terms of profit that we've seen recently, I am confident that this is still a good one. I'll personally be going full throttle on these during the drop in both grade school and men's sizes. Anyway, that will conclude it for today. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed or you perhaps learned a thing or two. Subscribe and enable post notifications just to stay 100% updated on all hyped releases. Also, feel free to check out the links in the description below for reliable, fast residential proxies and pre-verified Nike sneakers or Adidas accounts. Also, feel free to follow Endurance's Twitter for updates on restocks or key giveaways. Last but not least, make sure to follow Keith Adam 10 and personals for you so you guys stay updated on all the urgent info like I was discussing today as well as the site list. With that, I'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and good luck on the drop.